Today we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the World Weather Watch for the World Meteorological Organization. And it got its start way back in, in uh, 1957. It actually, there was a significant event in 1957 on October 4th when they had the first launch of Sputnik, which uh, orbited the Earth and gave the first opportunity of us realizing what the actual benefit space could offer to uh, the meteorological world. In particular, uh, prior to that, in, in the beginnings that go back to 1923, when the International Meteorological Organization had established a commission to look at synoptic meteorology. And we had done a lot of work during those years up to the uh, 50s looking at how we could share data and build uh, standards and networks and take advantage of some emerging telecommunications that was all coming as a consequence of following the Second World War. Now, the, what you might appreciate is that uh, with the launch of uh, space, with the launch of satellites, and the first artificial satellite orbiting the Earth. This was followed by Sputnik 2, just about a month later, and uh, shortly after that, the United States put one up in uh, January of the following year, 1958. And the United Nations General Assembly, were, of course, were looking at the peaceful applications of uh, space satellites and a recognition that there were huge gaps around the world with respect to understanding what changes were taking place in the world of meteorology. And so it was in this context that uh, the Fourth uh, Congress in 1963, as a consequence of some fundamental work that had preceded just the year or two before, and a recognition from the United Nations General Assembly by resolution asking the World Meteorological Organization to look at the peaceful application of and the benefits that space could offer to understanding changes in the Earth, uh, Earth's atmosphere. That we adopted the World Weather Watch at that Congress in uh, established a program that looked at the advancement of science and technology and the application that has led to modern day uh, work today where we use numerical weather prediction for a lot uh, to support our weather forecasting, which is made available to many or if not all of our member states around the world. So the benefits and, and the advancements really started when you think back to those years in 1957 with the foresight of those who were thinking about how they could use space as a way of monitoring the, the Earth. And it was the World Meteorological Organization that took advantage of those types of benefits to fill those vast voids that we had in understanding the hour-to-hour -hour changes that were taking place in our weather. The World Weather Watch is at a, uh, at a point in time where in this past year, the uh, World Meteorological Organization has adopted the Global Framework for Climate Services and established an implementation plan over the next 10 years. It's very clear that one of the key priorities of the World Meteorological Organization today is its integrated global observing system, which is a pillar of what we're trying to accomplish in the World Weather Watch as we move to the future. This will serve as a foundation for what we need to do in understanding the changes and the variability in our climate system. And so the application of the World Weather Watch is now going to be focused on how those benefits that have gone into weather forecasting and understanding changes in the Earth system will now be applied to those scales where citizens of the world, decision makers, governments need to be uh, inform about changes in the climate system in a way that they can establish effective adaptation to the climate extremes that uh, are a consequence of uh, many of the things that we are seeing today. So in short, the World Weather Watch has served us well for the last 50 years and will serve us for the next 50 years 
particularly now in the context of not only providing the very best weather forecasting services and warnings that we can provide to citizens, but also to the benefits of understanding those seasonal and interannual climate changes that also will have impacts on our economies.